welcome back to my Road to Pro. In this video, we're doing a film review of Club Wars. I made it to the finals and had the chance to represent my team of 8 in a winner takes all sudden death match. There was a lot on the line, so I want to look back and see how I handled the pressure of the moment. Before we get into the finals game, I want to show you a couple different ways I'm now spinning the ball on my serve. On this first one, I'm facing to the left and serving it in that direction. So whenever this ball bounces, look how hard that skips. It's kind of insane. Now I'm facing to the left again, but I'm serving from left to right. So when this ball bounces, it'll hit the ground and then bounce to the left. Bounces to the left, super hard to deal with. Now this is the exact same look, but this time I face to the right. So whenever this ball bounces, it'll bounce to the right. Serve it. Ball bounces right into him, very hard to deal with. I'm releasing an advanced spin technique video very soon, so make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Alright, this is one of the very first points of the game. I'm right here. This is Trenton, this is Russell, and Tom is serving. Tom serves to me, I return it, not too deep. He hits to me, and remember this decision right here for me to take this backhand and dink it cross court. Remember that. So Tom dinks it back to me with his backhand, I take it out of the air, and reset it over the middle. And then Tom speeds it up at Trenton, Trenton gets a paddle on it, and somehow gets that ball to land in over top of them. Now Trenton serving, Russell returns it over to my side, and I always like to try to drop it to this person's backhand, just because I'm less likely to get attacked if I hit it to their backhand. And this is why I said remember that last dink uh, when I had an opportunity. So same exact look, I'm about to dink it over here to his backhand, but this time I just flick it down the line for an easy point. Trenton serving again, Tom returns it, and then Trenton drives it to Tom this time. Now we're just trying to make our way in, trying to gain ground as we can. I say I left that one a little bit high, so I told that to Trenton, so he stops. I thought I had a good dink here, he hits it back to Trenton, and we're just trying to work our way in still. Uh, I see Russell takes one out of the air, so I get down low, pop that back up, and then here I see that Tom's about to take it out of the air with some power, so I take another step back, end up getting it in, and then right here, I see Tom is about to take the shot super low with his backhand, not a very offensive shot, so you see me just take off running, trying to gain ground, and I take it out of the air, pops it up, I put it away, and yeah, that's a really huge momentum shift early on. This was a pretty interesting point. Russell returns it, I'm dropping the ball, I end up dropping it middle here. I deflect that one back over the net, and on right here, I have a backhand dink. I take it, I move middle, and then I know that that dink just pushed Tom out to the side, and there's this opening here in the middle. So Tom hits me a ball that I think I can take out of the air, but I really have to reach in. And so to get to this ball, I'm going to have to end up jumping the corner. I hit the ball, jump the corner, and I just didn't hit my target. I hit it more to Tom's forehand than in this area where I was aiming for. And then Tom made Trenton pay for my mistake. We're returning this time. Trenton returns it very, very deep. Tom hits one that I can take out of the air. So I hit a roll to keep him back. They pop it up again. And then right here, I'm seeing that Russell's starting to gain ground on me. So I don't want to hit it too hard up at his chest and be too offensive. So I end up just lightly hitting the ball over the net. And had Russell taken a few more steps forward, he maybe could have taken that out of the air and attacked me. But he was slow coming in, so it wasn't much of a threat to us. And then play continues, they pop it up, Trent puts it away. I wanted to include this point because there's a technique right here that Trenton uses that I see a lot of tennis players use. And I don't think it's optimal, honestly, for pickleball. We're playing, I get a really nice shot over here to Tom's backhand, and you'll see once again, Tom's taking this ball super low, so Trenton knows to move in, and so do I. He pops it up, and then right here, Trenton has a ball that's about waist height, which for him is much higher than the net. So a ball that's that high should probably hit flat, or even add some topspin to it, but instead he really slices across the ball. You see his paddle come all the way across his body, putting some wacky spin on it, and it just ends up popping the ball up instead of hitting a shot that probably could have been a winner right there. And then Russell makes him pay for it. This time I decide to switch up the serve again. I end up putting topspin on this ball. And you'll see when it bounces, it really kicks up at Russell here. He returns it short, and I go back to the really safe option of dropping it to the backhand. I left it a little bit high, but still shot to the backhand, pretty safe. And Tom has trouble with it, puts it into the net. Here's another example of that tennis technique coming into play. 
Trent gets a nice high ball here. But instead of just hitting it flat or hitting it with top spin, he puts some like wacky backspin you would see in tennis. And because of that backspin, the ball sells out. I think this was a really smart play from Trenton. So Tom hits it to Trenton's side, and I don't think they should have came in on this ball. And the reason why is because Trenton steps around to take a forehand. And right now, Russell has to respect his down the line shot. So Russell needs to be over here, which he's doing a great job. Tom has to respect the dink to this side, which he is. Uh, but that really leaves the middle wide open. And so Trenton does a really good job here of speeding this ball up down the middle. Making them reach for it, and it causes a pop-up that I'm able to put away. There's something I want to mention here about communication. On this first drive for Muscle, the ball's going to go high, and I end up saying to Trenton, that's out. So it's okay to communicate to your partner and say the ball's out, even if they keep playing it. And this just lets us know to be aware that if that next ball is just as high, to let it go. And you'll see, that's exactly what we do. So we're in an offensive position pretty much this entire point, but there's really one cool thing I want to show you here. So taking some pretty safe putaways and a ball that drops shallow into the kitchen. One thing you can do is step up to it, squat down, and now it's like you have a forehand, but you're super close to the net. You just got to be really careful to not touch the net on your follow through. After a few more shots, we end up winning the point. Here's another point where we had a really good opportunity to be offensive. I get a pop up here and I have an overhead. And I hit it with a lot of power, but I hit the ball super shallow. And this gives Russell a great opportunity to return it. He pops it up. Same thing with Trenton here. Nice overhead to his backhand. A lot of power, but it balances super shallow. So it's super easy for these guys to get back to it. And then they end up making an incredible play here. And winning the point. So I'm serving it left to right, I put top spin on it, going to the right direction, and I hit it deep, and this causes Tom to step back to return this ball. So now I'm about to hit the ball, he's still coming in, and because my serve was so deep and it kept him back, this allows me to drive the ball at him to take some time away. And because he doesn't have enough time, he can't get a really good shot on my third shot, so this ball is now a super easy drop for me on my fifth shot. I take it, I really like this from Tom right here. He hits the ball to my backhand and watch him step across. He moves super far over here to the middle. And I like this because now I'm like in a 2v1 situation. So it's Russell and Tom versus me and I don't have a lot of opportunities or options. I end up popping the ball up here and Tom should have definitely put this one away. But a better shot for me would have probably been to have rolled it back across Tom's backhand and make him regain that ground that he just took away. I got super fortunate there though. And uh, you'll see that I am, <laughs> I know I got away with one for sure. <laughs> We're returning, Trent hits it, comes in. And then right here, I see the ball's kind of popped up. I still lean forward and this causes Russell to hesitate coming in. He that puts the weight on his front foot to stop his momentum from coming in. I let the ball bounce. And I choose to hit it to Tom's side, but a better shot for me looking back at this would have probably been to Russell's forehand because he's so far back. And if I just dump it off to his forehand, there's a pretty good opportunity that he pops it back over the net this way, which sets me up for a perfect Ernie. But instead I hit it to Tom, he pops it up to me, and then right here I just did a nice attack, targeting Russell's shoulders. And we get into a hands battle, I end up winning it. A couple of things I want to point out here that you may not have seen before. Right now, Trenton's showing me an open palm behind his back, and this tells me that we're going to switch on this point. So as soon as I return the ball, I'm going to step over to his side. He's going to step over to my side, and we're going to take those positions. That's what that means. Open hand to switch, closed hand to stay. Second thing is, as Tom hits this to me, Trenton watches it. So he actually physically turns his body to watch this ball. Super important because this ball lands out and from my position, I couldn't tell because I'm behind it. It looks like it may have hit the line, but he has a very clear line of sight on it. So it's his duty to make this call and he makes the right call. Trent serving again. Russell hits it back deep to me. And then right here, I know I hit a beautiful third shot. So you see me already coming in. And then I also see both of their paddles down low. So this is my second sign to let me know that it's okay to come forward. I step forward, they pop the ball up, and because I gained that ground, I can now take this ball out of the air. 
I attack them, they pop it up, I look to poach this ball again, you see me moving over to take it, I realize that it's too far away, a great job from Trenton to stay in this point, and he ends up putting it away. So we're serving again, Tom returns it, I see here that Trenton's hitting a nice third shot, and then I see Tom's paddle go super low to the net, giving me full permission to come across and poach this ball. I put pressure on my outside foot coming inside. And then Tom actually hits a really nice dink here. I was hoping he would pop it up so I could be aggressive, but I still need to commit to it. I step across, Trenton recognizes this, it switches with me, and then I end up hitting just a little dink over the net. But I left it a bit too high. Russell speeds it up at Trenton, and Trenton probably should have had this. He had his pad on the right position, but I just got in on him and ended up pinning him and we lost the point. So we're getting deep into the game now. A crowd starting to form, the energy is super high. It's really easy to get nervous here and to make your body tense up a bit, especially when stuff like this happens. So Tom hits it to me, I hit it back to him. He drives it, it hits off the net. I can't get to it, something I really couldn't control. And they have just a big burst of energy. And in these moments, it can be really easy to kind of get dissuaded and kind of get down on yourself. But it's really important to realize that every single point is a brand new point. Just take a couple of deep breaths, ground yourself, and remember, it's just another day in the park. Nothing too big here. So you'll see, like we talked about earlier, I have the switch on. So whenever Trent returns his ball, we switch sides. And I just want to applaud him right here for taking a really good overhead angle. If you do have the opportunity to take that angle, I think you should always take it. Make your opponent make a heroic play rather than just hitting it right to him. So good job from Trenton. I'm serving again, no spin this time. I drop it and then right here I see Tom is about to take this ball out of the air and he has a lot of room to work with on my right side. So you'll see me actively move my body over to the right side to protect those angles. Had he hit a really sharp angle, I knew I could have gotten to it. I hit a beautiful shot back over the net and play continues. Right here, Trenton steps around this ball to take a forehand and he's going to push Russell out wide. Recognizing this, I step across from the middle of the court, kind of towards the middle of my side to protect my line. And because I moved over and Trenton didn't, there's now quite a large gap in the middle which Russell tries to exploit but he doesn't quite hit the shot and we end up getting the point. So the score is 11-10. I'm now facing to the left. When I serve this ball, I'm going to flick it forward, serving it from left to right. So the ball is going to hit the ground and I skip to the left. I don't get a huge kick on it and Russell hits a pretty nice return. I drop it to him and he takes it just a little too aggressive and we end up winning the point and the game. So crazy, but we pulled it out. It's been a good day. Thanks for watching. Peace out. See you guys later.